You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Vegas. It's rock. It's dogs. It's Vegas Rock Dog Radio. A rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. Stand by for great guests and cool advice. All in one rockin' hour. The phone lines are open at 702-483-4444. That's 702-483-4444. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is the rock and roll queen of dogs, Sam. (laughs) Good morning. We're already laughing before we even start the show today. So, can you hear me now, Sam? I I am not talking to myself, by the way. (laughs) My guest is also called Sam, and my guest is also from England, and we're friends. (laughs) And we look nothing alike. (laughs) She's as tall as you can imagine, and I'm as short as you can imagine. Oh, my Lord. So, you're listening to Vegas Rock Dog radio a rock and roll show all about pets people and pop culture and i am your host my name is sam and i'm the queen of rock and roll dogs i feel like i've had a rock and roll week this week i'm so tired but i will tell you how exciting my week has been uh, in a little while so if you listen to the show today it's going to be a fun show because uh brits like to laugh a lot we think we're funny we think we're funny um and it's going to be full of useful information as we talk to Sam, Sam Raymond from the Las Vegas Boxer Rescue. So before we get started, I want to tell you how you're going to find us and connect with us all over the internet. And our main website is VegasRockDogRadio.com. You stream, and it is not streaming today, because I've got a busy day and I don't have time to break down after the show. So... Next week will be Ustreaming, but you can actually watch in uh, most weeks on Ustream.tv and our channel is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Facebook, it makes me wonder, you know, like you forget that you're on camera. It makes me wonder, I never look back at the show. <laughs> it makes you wonder what I've been doing, you know, what, I'm pulling faces while I'm doing the show. I mean, maybe that's why I shouldn't look, look back on the shows, but uh, that's your Ustream. Facebook is Vegas Rock Dog Radio, and we've got a contest going on right now on our on our Facebook page and it's our Halloween contest and all you have to do is post a picture of your pet and it's best Halloween Halloween can't even speak today Halloween attire Uh, really really easy and then we'd like you to uh, follow us on Twitter and tweet about it so you can find that link on not only on uh, our Facebook page but also on our blog which is the rock and roll dog com. We have a really cool, creepy Halloween video with my dogs in it and blood running down the, the screen and everything. It's not cute. I saw Mr. Twix, I think, in the picture, didn't I? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. oh I'm, I haven't found the right outfit for him. He's, he's, he's not... He's a little devil, a I'm cute one. I'm a showgirl. Oh, Even though he's a man with the eyelashes. Because <laughs> he did look like a ladyboy with he that did. thing on yesterday. I was like, oh, he looks like a girl. <laughs> uh, so that's the contest. It's our dare, dare to share your Halloween photos with us for Halloween. And then we'll, uh, we'll pick out a winner and we'll send them some Vegas Rock Dog gear. Our Twitter account is Vegas Rock Dog Show. No W on the end. Our call-in number today, 702 702- 483-4444 and if you're in Vegas you still need to dial 702 and you are listening to us live from Sin City which if you don't know what Sin City is it's Las Vegas <laughs> and uh, we're on Vegas All Night Radio part of Lotus Broadcasting and you can also find my show through that website VegasAllNightRadio.com and just click on the big flashing uh, speakers or you can listen to an archive show by scrolling down you'll see the guests and the topic really easy Instagram is Vegas Rock Dog. Our uh, rock and roll clothing for you and your pet is VegasRockDog.com. We have our new shirts up, Eat, Sleep, Bark, Repeat. Someone says to me, why not Eat, Sleep, Meow, Repeat? I'm like, start your own clothing line. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> I love my uh, new shirt. I love great it. great quality, aren't really they? See, so I did not pay her to say <laughs> this. I swear to God, I did not. But uh, Eat, Sleep, Bark, Repeat. And we've got tank tops. We've got dolman sleeve t-shirts. And we've got the long sleeve tees. I'm going to live in the long sleeve tees. Me too. Along with my yoga pants like you all see. I could also season. sleep in it because it's that soft. And yeah. I like soft stuff oh, when I sleep. Oh, me too. I mean, yeah. who wants a scratchy t-shirt that's like cardboard? Those promo t-shirts are horrible, aren't they? If you're doing promo t-shirts, do a good t-shirt. 
because it defeats the purpose. I'm not wearing it if it's scratchy. Exactly. Or boxy. I don't <laughs> or like boxy. the man's ones. <laughs> Why? None of us need a triple XL. <laughs> no. None of the girls need that. And most of us, most people in rescue are women. So uh, think about that on your next promo shirt. Um, I already told you our blog is therockandrolldog.com. And you can find me on Google Plus at Sam. Ratcliffe with an E on the end. So I'm going to start with my tip of the week. And because it is the howling season, it's not for all pets. And you, I think you need to be very, very careful of that because, you know, some people are putting hats and stuff on pets and they, mm. don't, they don't like it, you know what I mean? And you've got others that are totally fine with it, like mine. So uh, here's the tip of the week. And uh, it pertains to Halloween. Halloween is just a week away and pet parents are planning not only their own Halloween uh, celebration, but they like to include their pets too which is really really fun and here's a quick list of do's and don'ts when it comes to halloween and pet safety uh here we go so the don'ts let's start with the don'ts first there's always more don'ts than do's <laughs> don't allow your pets around halloween decorations chewing on electrical cords and fake cobwebs can be deadly don't allow your pets to chew on whole pumpkins i saw this this morning someone gave someone a whole uh, their pet a whole pumpkin and it was just chewing away on it. And they thought, oh, it's a great toy. And then people were endorsing it. And, oh, I've heard pumpkin's really good for them. Well, let's give you a few little facts A spoonful on in their food. That is good. A <laughs> spoonful. Sam knows. She knows. Let me tell you what it is. Um, so basically, a large dog would only eat between two and five teaspoons. You would start them off with two teaspoons. Mm. But we're talking about the canned, unsweetened kind. Cause it's not the pie filling. Not the, not the pie <laughs> not filling. The pie that's, that's for me and Sam to eat. <laughs> so it's not a lot of it's not a lot of pumpkin the stems if you leave your stems on your pumpkins they've got these um sharp fiber hair type things on them that can cut their mouth and cut their intestines actually even i didn't know that isn't that scary it is scary yeah so y you don't want them chewing on that either and then of course you've got to think about bacteria Mm -hmm. I mean, did you really, 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 really wash that pumpkin? No, no. you did not. <laughs> and so you don't want to give them a pumpkin as a toy. What you need to do is just stick with an unsweetened can of pumpkin and you'd be so much safer that way. And what about the seeds? Because I know some seeds are not good for I've read that you can actually give them the seeds, but they're saying to actually roast them a little bit so yeah. they actually can crunch and break them down a little bit. Right. I personally just wouldn't bother. No. You, you and I are the same. I we know. are the same. I'm like, if there's even a remote <laughs> chance that something could go wrong, I'm not doing it. I Guess have what? a whole approved food list, and everybody, like in my friends and family, know if it's not on that list, you don't give it I to the I think dogs. that is fantastic because mm. we're coming up to the, the, the holiday season, and... I mean, you th I never have anyone to my house, but you may, may have people come to your <laughs> house. But it's something to think about because there's always someone wants to put some crazy, you know, let's give them some grapes. Let's yeah. give them some blah, 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 blah. Oh, we're making some get closer. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, there's always someone who thinks they know what they can give a pet. Yeah. And to be honest with you, it's like, would you just give someone's baby something? whatever you feel you should get exactly. no you shouldn't you know you should always ask and um it's great to have that list yeah it really is i have a good um list uh that goes up on the blog every year based on that alone and if you're not sure how to approach people and say don't feed my dog food that i've not approved yeah. tell them they're on a special diet that's what i do there you go can yeah. you not give them anything on a very special diet that's it it's simple so when it comes to the pumpkin and it is good. F it is good for your pets. Pumpkin is very good for your pets, but in a, a much smaller dose than you would think. It's not a toy. Don't give them a big pumpkin to chew down. One one person said, "Oh, um, my dog chews on that for hours," and I'm like, mm. "Can you imagine picking up the poop after that?" Oh, and no. they've never eaten pumpkin before. And no, not worth it. Not worth it. Do it. Do it in a smart way. Anyway, the next don't is. Don't answer your door to trick-or-treaters with your pets because pets do not need to experience strangers giving a scary trick. It's not going to apply to me, that one, because we don't have kids. We've only got our dogs. So I, we shut the lights off for dinner. <laughs> I never answer the door, right? <laughs> it's like I'm not getting up every two minutes to no. answer my door. Do you know what I do? I put a big bowl of 
I don't like the candy here anyway. I don't. No. We are chocolate snobs, I will tell you that right now. <laughs> and I just leave a big thing of gross candy. I never have to worry about overeating candy because it's horrible. I don't like the candy here. And I put it on the table, on the driveway, and say, take what you want. I'm sure the yeah. first kid that shows up takes the whole bowl. Yeah. I'm sure of it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't feel the, the, the barking, the craziness. I, know. I can't do it. And if, you know, strangers are scary to pets, you know. Strangers in costumes are scary to pets. Yeah. Screaming kids are scary to pets. <laughs> and to people. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a nanny saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So just don't do it. It's not worth the stress and the hassle. You can take them to a different part of the house, you know, so keep them away from that front door. Also, don't allow other people to give your pets treats. Well, I mean, there's always those uh, awful, um, uh, what do they say, you know, every year, like, check your kid's candy for yeah. razor blades and tack and stuff like that one that's one concern but two again chocolate is not good for pets uh, candy is not good for pets chewing gum is not good for pets <laughs> you know so don't let anyone give your pets anything in all honesty I won't even take a, I won't even take a dog treat from a stranger I just no, I you don't. know so it's just it's just worth being really really safe as simple as that uh, don't dress your pets up if it's just not their thing if they don't like to wear something on their head or shoes, just don't do it. You can still have fun with them by taking photos, you know, with you in your costumes. And you're totally fine that way. Um, and always supervise your pets when they've got costumes on. Really, really important. I put a costume on my dog, on one of my dogs, and then the other two will just go crazy. They think it's a great big game and they just want to rip, rip it off. Rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> they know better. Well, like, I just bought that. They're like, get that off. You look ridiculous. Dogs are smarter than we give them credit. <laughs> but use Halloween as an opportunity to make memories with your pet. That's really, really important because, you know, it's fun. it can be really, really fun. Um, here's a couple of other things. Ooh. Uh, so we talked about gum. We talked about chocolate. They can be deadly. Don't dress your pets if it's not their thing. Don't leave them unattended in the costumes. Always supervise them to make sure they're safe or to prevent other pets from ripping off their costume <laughs> and chewing it to pieces. But here are your do's. Do make healthy and safe pumpkin Halloween treats for your dogs from that unsweetened canned pumpkin. <laughs> really easy. Do dress your pet warm if you're going to be out and comfortable make sure that they're okay with strangers otherwise don't bother going out it's, it's no point stressing out your dog um, and uh, do use Halloween I say to uh, create some nice memories with your pet and um, do have your vet's info close should anything happen any kind of emergency because that way you'll be saving time and you know what you must do you must enter your pet into a Halloween contest <laughs> on yeah. our Facebook page so <laughs> get yourself over there and enter your pets so it's not just dogs it can be anything um, I hear that ferrets really like to dress up at Halloween. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. People love to dress ferrets. I have a couple <laughs> in my neighborhood, they walk their ferrets on leashes. Do you know what I thought, thought at first, because it was kind of dark, I thought, oh my gosh, look, they're little dachshunds. How tiny are they? <laughs> Very low to the ground. Fer two ferrets. Woolly sweaters. Fantastic. That's cute. Love it. Yeah. I love it. So, oh, you know what? Let's take a quick break, Chris. That's a good idea. Let's take a quick break. We're going to listen to some words from our sponsors. And when we come right back, we are going to speak with Sam Raymond of the Las Vegas Boxer Rescue. You've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. With me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. We'll be right back. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's talk pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Now, let's return to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Here again, your host, the rock and roll queen of dogs, Sam. And we're back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And my guest in studio today is my friend. She has the same name. Her name is Sam. And she's a Brit also. And we're chocolate snobs, but we love dogs. We do. <laughs> we have a good side to us. You know, we have a really good side to us. We were just saying, there's no risk of us overeating the candies out here because we don't like them. <laughs> it's kind of a godsend, really, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. And I always buy 
the worst the candy worst candy that, that I can find because you're not touching then it. I won't touch it. It's yeah. a really good method. But then so. I get my British stash sent over <gasps> when family come over, and that stuff goes into lockdown. And it's called don't touch it. You know what? I hide mine from Jim. Do you I hide mine from Dennis? Do you know why? Because I will put a piece in my mouth and let it melt <laughs> and it can last a long long time <laughs> Dennis will shove it in like and he does it it's no it's respect like, get some Hershey's do yeah. that with Hershey's not no with respect stuff. for the chocolate <laughs> exactly. if you didn't grow up with it you do not understand what it means exactly. to us I mean literally are you a member of the Facebook page um, Brits in the USA no oh my gosh every day everybody posts what they made for tea we call dinner tea in England yeah. by the way what they made for tea and usually it's a picture of them opening their suitcase having come back from England <laughs> and the whole suitcase is full of chocolate biscuits hobnobs chocolate crisps fantastic mushy peas dried mushy peas I had to get extra luggage last time I came back from England <laughs> and my chocolate alone weighed 6 kilos which is what like 12 pounds <laughs> I had my pockets full <laughs> and I had, I swear I got stopped at every single checkpoint at um, Gatwick <laughs> right. and then the very last checkpoint, they had an extra checkpoint before I got on the plane and she's like, I'm going to need you to open everything up and I'm oh. like, please just don't take my chocolate off. Just don't take the cho- <laughs> because when we had mild cow disease, we couldn't bring chocolate back. You remember that? I All those remember. years ago, yeah, no. they stopped it out. What? I can't go. <laughs> I can't go. Oh, it means the world to you. When, like, my friend Ben Stone, he just came back recently from Liverpool and he did bring a suitcase back and he had it. He's too kind. He had it all uh, portioned out for all his friends. Yeah. You see, I won't I ask. couldn't. I, I won't Sometimes, share. you know, if I, if I know you're going for instance, <laughs> I, it's my first thing is I should ask Sam to bring me this, this, this. And it's like, you know what? I can't do it because it's going to take up her space. I know. Stop. Stop. <laughs> and I swear, can you believe we're so into chocolate And I'd that have way. to put you in the position of saying, Sam, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> can make me uncomfortable now. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in the States now, Sam? 19 years this yeah, Christmas. That, that's me, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't that mad? Yeah. How did you get here first? Um, I was married before. Right. Um, and I was living in Australia, and he got transferred over here for a oh, job. Oh, so this is how it all happened. This is how it happened. We came, and you know what? I actually went to a psychic. Yeah. The very first year I moved to Australia, I'd always wanted to move to Australia. So my very first year I moved there and I had my cards done and he said, oh, you're going to end up in North America. And I no. immediately thought, oh, okay, this like, guy no, just doesn't Australia know is my about. dream. He doesn't even know I've just moved here. <gasps> so I didn't really pay attention for the rest of the reading, but he was bang on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's amazing. And as soon as I got, I never wanted to come to the States. Was never really it was never really It was never on, on the top travels. of my list because I'd, li- I'd lived in Hong Kong and Japan and and other countries that really, really appealed to me, but yeah. you never know when you're going to meet a musician on a cruise ship <laughs> that you're working on. You know, next thing you know, you're in Pittsburgh. Not for long. As soon as I got place. here, I felt like it was home. Did you really? You know, in Australia, I think I felt like I was so cut off if I needed to get home to England so quickly. Far. You know, it's like a 36 hour, unless you go direct, then it's like 22 hours. Yeah, it's still insane. But here, it? I can. 12 hours yeah. less than 12 hours and I'm home and especially anyone that's on the east coast oh my god oh, was it 7 hours eight, exactly it's, nothing, it's, it's like nothing. living in Scotland to Cornwall you know? in all honesty <laughs> isn't it you yeah. know but it's not funny he just and he was right spot on I know oh my yeah. gosh that's amazing I need to go to a psychic no I don't I don't know where I'm going to go next I don't want to know <laughs> <laughs> you know Sam we were going to have a psychic come to an event this weekend and um, it turned out the whole event changed we didn't need it right I could not find her card she had given me at the gay days um, when yeah. we had the booth there I could not find her card I had no idea what her name was I'd just spoken to her briefly there and she agreed to come to our event and they needed to cancel I oh. could not I was racking my brains yesterday and thinking oh my gosh how am I going to get in touch with her she called me my oh. phone <laughs> rang and it was her and I'm like I don't believe this <laughs> she's a psychic <laughs> she knew she's she, good right she <laughs> She knew. <laughs> was she a pet psychic? She does pets too. Oh, yeah. I'd love to have a pet psychic on the show. I would love Rod. Oh, you know what? You should. You should talk that to her would maybe. Be, do you have I the, have a number now. Number now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me tune in and I'll get her to call me. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, I'd love to have a pet psychic. Yeah. And have people call into the show. That would be great. Yeah. Oh, I see. I love anything like that. Me too. I think we. I think a lot of Brits like that kind of stuff. But we also love conspiracy theories. We <laughs> love that and UFOs. And what else do we like? We like anything that's like out there. I know. <laughs> well, I think being in rescue is kind of out there because it's a very, very different world than people can even imagine. Don't it you is, think? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a it's a very up and down uh, thing to be involved in, wouldn't you say? Yes, it is. And I think once you're in. 
you're, you're in. in. I don't think there's any way of getting away from I don't. rescue. Even if you may not be on the front lines and you decide not to do that, I think you'll still always be connected in you some will. way. Yeah. I would never feel right if I wasn't involved in some way, like raising money. Me would, too. Isn't that strange? Yeah. It's like it's like a lifetime. That's why I think a lot of people burn out because it's hard to step away, even for a short period of time. She feels terribly guilty, mm. you know, that the, the rescue needs you, these animals need you. But that's why they burn out because it is very, very hard to step away. It is. But it's very, very, it's, it's rewarding and also equally as exhausting. Yeah. You know, yeah. and stressful. So and emotional. I mean, it's yeah. like sometimes it's really good. You have all these happy endings. Yeah. And these amazing dogs being rescued. And then just the other side of it is just. Yeah. What did somebody say to me once? It, it's, it's rescue is like having to sit down at times for dinner with your worst enemy and just like suck it up and be nice and yes. it really is yes and you know what and there's always critics too mm -hmm. and that's a real you can't I mean, if you're not in rescue you're probably thinking people criticize people who volunteer their time and I mean they give their money and everything and make a lot of sacrifice and people criticize they do it's it's a uh, armchair critics are probably the worst mm -hmm. I think when it comes to rescue people and, yeah. and with us having social media it's very easy for them to access you to do that you know yeah. to be critical on you you know so you have a, a lot to deal with coming from all kinds of different angles now, what's the website for the Las Vegas Boxer Rescue? www.lvbr.org. Oh, that's really easy. Yes. And on Facebook? The Las Vegas Boxer Rescue. On Just Twitter? You on Twitter? You know what? I'm not sure what's happening with our social media. We really need to, because we've had a lot of adjustments in the rescue. Yeah, Just I in noticed. the last two months, we have a new president, Emily Tall, who is, I my hat's off to her because Great. she's in this 24-7. Wow. And, um... So we've had a lot of adjustment with new people, new board members, and I think we don't have a social media person at the moment. So. Oh, right. So if you're listening in and you want to help a rescue and you don't think you have it to actually be on the front lines, which is not easy, you know, but you can certainly help by doing social media. Get hold of us because we'll put you in touch. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic outreach. Yes. It's just, God, what did we do before that? I don't know. It must have been really hard. You oh. know, we have had, I've seen, not just with our rescue, but other rescues, that a dog will be posted mm -hmm. that is in an urgent situation that needs out right now. And in under an hour, by the time you've spread it around, we've had a foster home. The Take pink care dogs of. Being it's, and it's just, it's such a good feeling. Yeah, I, th I guess the only way it was done before was pick up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's not the easiest way or like it's very time consuming that it way, is. you know, but yeah. the social media is brilliant. I mean, like that. less than an hour and it's just taken care That's of. That's why I always, I always say at the end of the show, share their information because you never know who's going to clap eyes on that animal and say, oh, I can help in this way or I know someone who can. Yeah. You know, so um, as I say, I'm not, I'm not so bothered about the likes. I don't care about yeah. likes, you know, um, but definitely sharing. I mean, most people are looking for the pets through social media now mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. They go online and they go, oh, I want to adopt, I want to adopt a boxer. So then go to your page and see what's going on. Are you on any other social media platforms? I Do don't you know? know. I'm not sure. It's not sure, right? You don't have to be perfect. <laughs> How many people are involved in the rescue? You know how many? Yeah, with like the the board and we everyone. have four main board members. Well, we have a lot more. You know, we have we're in the middle of just adjusting the board now because we've got new people. Yeah, so we're having to go through the five hundred one paperwork again and just make some adjustments on just that. Just update. Yeah. But we have. I would say we probably have seven eight possibly core members who are just in always it, there yeah day in day out and then we have a lot of amazing volunteers who help us out with our events yes um you know help us out with transport and everything so we do need more volunteers yeah. we really do we can't i mean we can never have enough because not everybody can commit to every week and i understand that that's right and you know i i think it's if you want to volunteer just be really clear about what your co commitment can be you yeah. know hey you know what i can work weekends uh hey i can do stuff on my computer exactly i can do it for the next three months you and know and it's not just having to to go to an event every week like yeah. we're just saying social media there's website stuff that needs transportation we need help with transportation yeah so it's, it's there are many, just many 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 areas mm -hmm. and uh transportation is always a big one isn't it is anyone yeah. available to transport I a dog know, or a cat I know. but um so that's a that's that's a good, nice core group of people it is and How they're all good and we're all women apart from emily's husband who really is like he does so much behind the scenes tom oh, i mean he, he, you never see him on facebook he's never at the events but he's always setting up taking down running oh, the dogs around i wish we had more men in rescue yeah i think I it will balance out some of that craziness because <laughs> <laughs> it gets heated at times oh and i don't know why there aren't more men in rescue i just don't know yeah, i don't know i mean i don't know is it a mothering instinct i don't know that, that women kick into that kind of thing or a little bit and more I sensitive have to, to say 
uh, what else I've noticed lately is there's a lot of attractive women, really attractive oh, women in rescue. Yeah. Some of those California <laughs> girls, have you <laughs> seen them? I'm tell- <laughs> Let me tell you, pretties with pitties, let me yeah. tell you, you would want to volunteer <laughs> with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of hot women in rescue. Come on, people. We should start doing a calendar. Do you think. know what? I've been, t- I've been thinking about it, and I'm thinking nude. <gasps> hot men. Oh, yeah, men. Yeah, nude. I was going to say, not the not Puppies. Me. <laughs> I'm, I'm Pu- English. With puppies. <laughs> With puppies, yes, I know a lot of celebrities Aww. in town. But now I, I would be happy involved. to volunteer on that photo It'll shoot. It'll be a close <laughs> set with just Sam and Sam, the Sam and Sam show. <laughs> a perk of being a rescue. Uh, yeah, definitely, we need a calendar. Yeah, and I think with Vegas, we can kind of get away with being on the edge. We can, yeah, you know, a little yeah. sexy, or maybe a lot sexy, because that's what sells. And if that raises yeah. money for animal sex rescue, and <laughs> sex and puppies. Can't go wrong, can you? <laughs> but you actually participate in a lot of events that people that are different, not mainstream, like the Gay Days. Yes. Um, and Electric Daisy Carnival. Yes. What other ones have you done? Um, we do a lot of the Speedway ones. We do. Um, I noticed that. Yeah. Which uh, actually, I don't help there because we have a really nice group of, of the younger people, the the, wait, the bar staff here in town. Oh. And it's, they don't really make many tips there because you can't um, advertise for tips at all those events apart from the EDC events. I see. But God bless them. They show up and they do like a 10-hour day with Aww. a couple of hours prior to that check-in. And they show up and they work and they, they raise money for the boxes. That is fantastic. Yeah. I like the fact that you're at non-traditional events as well yeah. as your traditional mm-hmm. events because it, you're, you're losing some of, of uh, your audience yeah. if you're just only catering to people that walk through a pet smart. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like you say, and all people of all ages adopt animals, you know. So exactly. How fantastic. I bet Electric Daisy Carnival is really fun. I didn't go to that one. Oh. You know, I just, maybe maybe 10 years ago I would have done. But I, I mean, and I was ready. I was ready to have to go if I couldn't get enough volunteers. Right. But thank goodness I did because, you know, Sam, I go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> the festival yeah. didn't start until 9, ne- I don't in think. In her neon fake fur <laughs> leg warmers and her, uh, you know, neon light <laughs> necklace. Like for, she would wear for Electric Daisy Carnival. <laughs> You see, I like the fact that you don't do, just do mainstream because mm-hmm. you're really broadening, you know, the type yeah. of people that would be interested in animals. And yeah. I think that's great. And even if it's not about adopting, it's about donating. Exactly. Know? And just getting the word out there, you know, getting people to know about us and spread the word. Now, tell me about today's event. Today's event is not our event. It's um, another rescues event, but it is um, an adoption event, Halloween adoption event. Glow. Let me have a look on my piece of paper, which you didn't think I would need, <laughs> Sam. I, do need I tried it. to deter her from using her notes. It is the Radiant Glow Yappy Halloween adoption event, and it is at 4324 Southeastern Avenue from 10 until 4. Nice. What kind of a location is that? It's a, I think it's a little dog spa or something. Oh, how cute. I want to say it is. I don't know any more than that. I'm really sorry. That's okay. Yeah. We, well, it'll be, I'll tell you where you'll find all these um, events is on um, my sponsor's page, the Las Vegas Pet Sea magazine. They have a calendar and a lot of people go to that calendar to find out what the events are. And so if you've got an event, definitely upload, but you can definitely see what's happening the whole month. It's on our Facebook page as well for today. Perfect. Today. Absolutely perfect. Now, what time are we on? Okay, 9.30. So let's talk about boxes. How long have you been with the rescue first? This rescue uh, this rescue kind of started up, um, I think, last June. So June 2013. No way! Yeah, I it thought it had been going so much longer. It had. It was, it was um, the, the president who just left yeah. our rescue, Carrie, she um, was with a uh, teamed up with a different rescue. They had to box a club and rescue, but they ended up separating. That's where the confusion comes in. Because yes. I'm like, who's who? Okay, yes. so then they did a little split there. Did okay, a little split, and then Kerry started up this one in June 2013. Oh wow, not long so ago, not really. Long she did. I'm telling you something. Did some great work, though. I have to say, yeah. really, really great work. You know work. what? We have made huge strides in just the time we've been um, we've been set up. We now have our 501c3, so we're completely non-profit. Ah, oh, that's great. Which is huge, and. Um, I, you know, we have just like a good simpatico, I think, going on with mm-hmm. all the all of the members and yeah. um, get the dogs adopted, pull in as many as we can. That's it. And I think you respond very, very well to people who are, are reaching out to you. Because here's the thing, and I hear it all the time is, and I know this from experience of trying to contact rescues to come on the show or, you know, wh- and I've tried, I mean, I tried every which way. So it's, I've left a message, I've emailed, I've tweeted yeah. you, I've even <laughs> messaged you on Facebook, I've even put a public post on there, which I hate to do, like somebody get back to me. You will be surprised how many rescues do not get back to me. Yeah. Now, and then I hear this, and then I hear, but we're all volunteers and we have no time. So here's the thing. 
if you do not have communication, what's the point of having a rescue who needs to one connect with people, not only to work with them, but people that are uh, you know surrendering a pet, or we've got a, a dog that we need to get a home for. Right. If you don't communicate. Does this not defeat the whole purpose of a it rescue? Does. It does. So here's the thing, and I, I often say this to people. So okay, so you say, oh, we're all volunteers, and da 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 da. Does that mean you can't do a job well? No, exactly. It doesn't, does it, Sam? Exactly. It does not mean you shouldn't do a job well because you don't get paid. Because if I paid you tomorrow, I bet you anything you'd get back Step to me. Step it up, right. Step it up, people. What I want to hear is I don't want to hear any excuses. Right. I do not want to, I want to hear, you know, oh, put on your website. Hey, well, we'll get back to you within 24 hours. Mm-hmm. You know, and stick to that. You know, make, make yourself you know accountable for that right it's the number one reason why, why you're going to get these animals these homes I and know. how you're going to get your donations in exactly you know do you know how many people contact me and say hey sam uh do you um is the docks and rescue doing a garage sale well we don't do garage sales and i said oh no but you can you know get hold of say regina at the beagle rescue she holds a lot of them you know and then they come back to me and say no one got back to me i'm not talking about regina by the way but no one got back to me right you know to me that's very disappointing yeah someone's reaching out you know, they've gone past me. I've recommended someone else. Yeah. It's really important. If it Make that a priority. Ma- even if it's, hey, will you answer the phones Monday through Wednesday? Will you answer the phones right. Thursday through Friday? Can you do the weekends? Even if it's just responding with an email to an yeah. email you receive saying, you know what? We are, you know, overloaded at the moment. Give us 24 hours yes. and somebody be in touch with you. Just so you've made that connection. Because really, I mean, how many times have you checked your phone this morning? I've checked my phone I hundred t- hundred, <laughs> I've checked like a hundred times. I checked it. I sent out a text just before I left to the volunteers for today. And I went, I'm not going to be available for the next couple of hours. And then it was like, Can okay, they cope with it? on your own. <laughs> so, I mean, think about it. When people say, oh, well, I can't get to it. Well, I saw you on Facebook. Exactly. I saw you on Twitter. You know, yeah. so pl- make that a major priority because your success rate will just shoot through the roof. We know when you've been on Facebook because we have your activity. Log, that's so we know you're right. available. That's right. <laughs> we can see you're on your mobile even. Yeah, even exactly. says that. That's kind of creepy, isn't it? I you know. know. I love those people that say, hey, my phone's broken. <gasps> yes. And then you see that they're on their mobile, posting from their mobile. <laughs> I know, and it makes me feel awkward because I want to say, you know what, I can see you're on your phone, but then I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I know what you mean, but you're like, oh, come on, people. So in case you didn't know that, don't say you're not on your phone because it shows that you're on your mobile phone or from your computer. <laughs> Nothing's sacred anymore, is it? I know. There's no privacy. But yeah, I, I, that's what I like about us and like about just your Facebook page, how you post something and people interact and you interact back with them. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen other rescue pages where they'll post something and people i mean they may literally just be saying oh my gosh what an adorable dog i wish i could take it and you know, thank you yes this is an adorable dog don't not respond to those yes. people because engagement is what gets you fans of your rescue exactly you know and and the next time you reach out for prizes for, for you know your event auction items money um donated items you know for drives and stuff like that guess what they mm-hmm. are right there they will step up and help yeah. you you know so you have to court these people it's really really important because if you don't mm, they want people want to be responded to i think so too and especially if they've reached out you know back a year ago we didn't Whoa. have uh, sorry <laughs> just smacking the equipment around here <laughs> we didn't have um an, a uh, volunteer coordinator you know when the rescue was setting up so we had all these volunteer apps come in and then finally i took it over mm-hmm. and it was four months after the rescue set up so i started making back calls and i can understand why these people felt a little bit offended yeah like you know we've reached out offering to help yeah and nobody got back to it's us it's like just months. turning you away yeah so we don't want your help yeah exactly without and actually they, saying it for all they know i could have looked at their app and thought throw it in the trash they're not good enough but right. that's not what happened and it's the perception perception is yeah. so important you know it's like your websites if i if you if i go on a rescues website and it's not up to date it makes me think you don't care yeah. You know, it may not be the case. Right. It may be you just lost your web person, mm-hmm. but it makes me feel like, oh, you don't care. You're up to date. Right. Are they still operating? Yeah. You know, and it is a lot of work, trust me, updating and, and doing all that kind of stuff, but it's so worth it. Yeah. When it's fresh and it's current information, um, people will just keep going back regularly. So, yeah. yeah so that's that's my, that's my our tip of the day coming from <laughs> Sam. Communicate. <laughs> really, really important. Um, the boxer breed. Um it's not a dog for everyone. Very high energy. Yeah. Very playful. And they remain a puppy. You know what? I have Gage, who's 10. Right. Almost 10. And um, we've had him since May. And he gives my two-year-old <laughs> a run for his money. <laughs> I'm telling you. And sometimes Roger is lying there just like, leave me alone. Give me a break. Yeah, because they are, they're just eternal just puppies. Just perpetual puppies just mm-hmm. keep playing. And they're very bouncy, aren't they? Those long limbs. Very bouncy. I have tall boys. My boys are both tall. 
really oh, tall. They are handsome, they are I have cute. to say. They How are. does Lulu cope with them? Lulu rules the roost. Oh, she does. Lulu <laughs> is my little <laughs> pug chihuahua, and she rules the roost, and she doesn't really care for girls. Okay. I think it's because it kind of takes her spot from her. She oh, is the princess. female. She's princess. the alpha female, I think, even over me. Oh, she she's is. the boss of you. It's like my husband and her walk around as this duo <laughs> around the house. And then there's me in the boxes. Gang in upon you. Look, picky on me. <laughs> so I looked on your website because that's what I do. And, and I really, really liked, you know, how you fully explained what the boxer breed is about. Right. So these were some of the words, like, like uh, Sam said, the perpetual puppy, the athletic boxer, the independent breed, um, they love company, the adaptable boxer, friends with everyone. They do have some female aggression and they're a very joyful breed. So yeah. tell us about the female aggression. Um, you know, I've never had females. I, from what I gather from and what I've heard with people who have had females, mm -hmm. there can be a little few dominant issues between the two of them. I you know, see. That they, uh, I guess it's con trying to find, like most girls, <laughs> trying yeah. to find who's the alpha. Can you believe she wore that? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> exactly. So um, boys, I've always had boys and I just find them easier. Okay. Um, and they just, I don't know, they don't tend to be as assertive, I don't think, as the, the females. So they're a little more chilled out than I the girls. I think so, I yeah. think so. So it sounds like the girls are really territorial. They are. And that's yeah. something to consider if you've got other pets, mm -hmm. you know. Most people I know who have boxers, they either have all girls or all boys. Oh, okay. Which is kind of the way they do it. I thought it was yeah. really interesting when I was reading that. How are they to train? Are they pretty easy to train? Very, very smart dogs. Great. Very smart. And I think they need training. A lot of people, I think that's why a lot, I know that's why a lot of boxers get surrendered to the rescue and the I shelters see. because they get them as puppies they're cute and then they get big and they keep bouncing and around they keep bouncing <laughs> and they keep being cute but they're just big right and i think they need to they need to have structure they definitely need to have structure because they're goofy and it's good to you know it's like even a, a, a human child it's there's places to be goofy and there's places where you need to have structure yeah and in the home and when you have people over you need to this yeah. is i am so not talking from experience no, here because okay. i have zara the trainer coming out to, <laughs> oh, to do you? sort mine you out zara on the, the show the other week <laughs> <laughs> um but you know i try and work with mine every single day a little bit that's great so do, and i like to start with the walk because i kind of get them under control with the walk and, yeah and tie so, them out a little bit yeah get them a little focused get them you know to stop and do a sit halfway around that they're always focused on me and not focused on going crazy um and then um what was i saying about the structure oh that there's time to play and there's time time for structure because yeah. it really helps them well they, i would imagine they're bouncing off the walls if you don't do some of that stuff they are and then know. so of course a lot of people find that too much to handle all of a sudden it's like i can't have this dog anymore and it's like well work with a trainer i guarantee yes. you if you bring a trainer in and do some work yeah. and commit yourself don't just rely on the trainer do the work in between the sessions yeah I guarantee you, you'll have a different dog. Well, it's like it's like you seeing a trainer once a week. Uh, you've got to work out between as well. Yeah, you just exactly. have to, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's just an ongoing thing, it isn't is. it? You know. It is. um, I think it's really good to know that about the breed. It's a shame that people don't have the patience, exactly. the time, the forethought. Because trust me, but just by reading their website, I know from this website that I need to train my boxer when I rescue my boxer. Yes, you know. So there's no. Um, there's nothing hidden there. No. Which I really like. And it's like any dog really needs training. Yeah, they need totally. Training. But boxers, and I think bo uh, a breed like a boxer dog, they, they just do well in themselves. It's better for them to yeah. have some training. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of person fits well with a boxer breed? Um, families, definitely. I oh, think okay. boxers are <clears throat> excuse me, very much family dogs. They get on great with kids. And I notice, I don't have kids, but when my godchildren come over and they play, yeah. they're playing out in the backyard and then the boxers are all with them having a great time. Oh. And then they will come in, when the children come in, and one of the boxers will always wait till the end. Wait till all the <gasps> kids are in the house. It's like they want to make sure all their babies are in. Oh, and should they in? And then they'll come in. And then they'll come in. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Which I think is lovely. And then they sleep with them. If ever the godchildren have a sleepover, they will always, I'll always find the boxers curled up and the end of the bed oh, you know they always want to be that. with the kids oh how yeah. sweet but oh. aside from families of high energy i mean i always love it when we get a couple or a young couple who you know they put active. in their yeah. we hike at red rock and ah, we've got to mount yeah. Chelsea. they love that they love because they need a lot of exercise they're not your little dog that can do you know a little walk around and be, 10 minutes around the block tired. yeah now how big do they normally get are, are there different standards of boxes there are. okay and the european ones obviously get much bigger they they've got the big heads i mean they're gorgeous oh. the european boxes but the american ones tend to be smaller i seem to have always had boxes on the lighter side i mean right. i have a lot of you know 
boxer groups that I'm involved with and boxers that come into the rescue and they're saying, you know, my 85 pound boxer. And I'm like, 85 pounds? Like Roger's 62 <laughs> and his at his max, you know, and Gage is 61 and he's at his max. But I've got the taller, leaner ones, I think. Yeah, I've got those long um, legs. And even like previous boxers, boxers I've had, they've all been around the early 60 pound mark. But not the big, big. Not the big ones. Gosh. Maybe one day I'll have one of those. I never thought they'd be that big. The, like you're saying, the European ones yeah. be so much bigger. You have to Google a picture of those. That's of a lot German of dog boxing. to handle as well. Yeah. You know, so there comes the training. Really, really important. They're like big bears, but they're gorgeous. They're oh, gorgeous. Oh, how lovely. Yeah. Well, listen, let's take one more break. I'm going to come back. I'm going to talk a little bit more about boxes, and then I'm going to tell you um, some other stuff. <laughs> there you go. We'll be right back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Hey there, pet parents. This is Christy Vaughn, host of The Doggy Dish. Do you love your furry companion? Do you love making him or her healthy treats but can't seem to find the time? Great news. The Doggy Dish is the perfect show for you. Every episode is chock full of healthy and easy recipes that are made with ingredients you most likely have on hand. Tune into The Doggy Dish for yummy and healthy recipes for your canine kids. Every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. 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 This is Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. The phone lines are open at 702-483-4444. Now let's bring back the host. Here is the rock and roll queen of dogs, Sam. And we're back. You're listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio with me, Sam, your host, the queen of rock and roll dogs. And I have Sam Raymond here in studio from the Las Vegas Boxer Rescue and she's a Brit also she has the same name yay it used to confuse a lot you remember when we both have R for us. Yes, we do. Too. And then our f- mutual friend, Lalani, would, would post things like Sam, and I'd go, mm, that kind of doesn't relate to me. And yeah. I didn't realize there was another Sam. Oh, and I would reply to it, thinking, <laughs> I don't know why I've just replied to that, because I never did that. <laughs> <laughs> but one, another thing we have in common is we love animals, and uh, Sam does work on the front lines of rescue. Not an easy job, but certainly has lots and lots of uh, rewards. You have a lot of great... Um, success stories don't we do you? yeah um and we were just saying earlier about the boxer breed um they're uh, they're forever a puppy so you need to be someone who has some energy and some patience and some time make sure you train them uh pay them lots and lots of attention do they like to once they like if they've exercised and stuff, are they kind of like couchy do they love to be on a couch? very much they like to sleep and snore oh yeah <laughs> Sleep, and they like snore to snore and their slobber. tongues hang out when they Rogers sleep. Does, yeah. So cute. I, I can't know. even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we want to talk about another event that's uh, it's today, isn't it? Tomorrow. Uh, is it tomorrow? K9. October 26th. K9 Country. Which is at 8075 Rancho Destino Road. It's kind of the 215 and Windmill area. Oh, okay. Yes, I know exactly where it is. Yes. I've, I've driven past it. They do a lot of, they give us a lot of help. We do a lot of work with them. Oh, they now they're them. an open, um, a free roaming. They have a boarding facility. That's right. And he's a dog trainer too. Ah, isn't that great? I've seen, because they have an agility course outside that scene. They have a a swimming area. Is that there as well? I saw the pictures and I'm like, where is that? I know. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it's good. It sounds like it's something very different for Vegas. It is, and it's um, every dog looks really happy there. You know, they that's what <laughs> counts. So and I did read on their website that um, uh, they um, 
they're not it's not surveillance by a camera it's by human beings 24 hours a day yeah exactly and they have in i mean they live there so they have the dogs in their home oh my gosh i know it's a perfect scenario it is. isn't it yeah. it really is and that's canine country give us the address one more time it's Sam. 8075 rancho destino road 89123 and it's from 12 noon to 5 p.m tomorrow 12 noon to 5 p.m tomorrow it is a costume and adoption event so bring Aww. your pets um dressed up we have amazing gift baskets for prizes that's wonderful raffles i believe we have a band we have hot dogs, burgers. Oh, it's a shame I'm not going to be here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, shame I'm not going to be here. <laughs> Sounds like a really nice event, though. And yeah. The weather is so spectacular right now. It's going to be mid 70s time. Oh. So it's going to be even better. It's like heaven. And anyone yeah. else listening from anywhere else in the world are going, that's like summer for us. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool for us. And we love it, <laughs> let me tell you. Can I throw in, Sam, just yes. before the show ends, that if anybody is interested in volunteering for us or fostering for us, yes. if you go to www.lvbr, Dot org and yep. fill out an application form and I will be in touch with you. We desperately need fosters. We desperately need volunteers. Fosters, all the medical and all the food is taken care of. It's great. Yes. That is wonderful because a lot of rescues, unfortunately, are not in a situation to provide any food or anything. So right. that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'll make sure these links go up on our Facebook page too Thank so you can find them quite easily. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder that, of course, we've got a Halloween contest. Post a pic on our Facebook page, share the post and then follow us on, tweet about us on Twitter and... Uh, uh, you can also find all those details on our blog, therockandrolldog.com. I'd like to say a big, big thank you. Oh, we've got six minutes. Wow, that's a lot of time. <laughs> drag out that thank yeah, you. drag out that thank you. <laughs> and there are a lot of people. A big thank you to our sponsors, uh, because without them, the show would just wouldn't happen. It would just be me by myself. <laughs> And that'd look foolish. What I'd like to say, and I'm not closing out completely, but I want to get this in because sometimes I rush this, is remember, you can always help a pet in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information. Rescue your next furry family member and replace the word shop with adopt and be kind to all animals. You know, I don't care what they are, whether they're ferrets or a mm. ladybird or whatever. Yeah. Just be kind to all animals. It's really, really important. Um, Let's talk about, I had another question for you that I wanted to ask, which was, so did your position, did you ever have have a title? When I first started at the rescue? Yeah. I I started with the old rescue two years ago, just volunteering now and again, handling dogs at events. And then when the new rescue started last last June, Kerry asked me if I wanted to come on as board member. So I I did. I see. And then I came on, I'm still a board member, and then I also do the... um, a volunteer coordinating. I know. You're very good at getting your volunteers because you are very nice the way you ask them. Well, I, I'm a little bit too nice. I'm going to start cracking the whip <laughs> a bit more now because we need more. She's very respectful. <laughs> Lots of please and thank yous. And I love that. I love manners. We love manners. We do love manners, we? yeah. <laughs> it gets you a long way. Manners are everything. Yeah, a little, yeah. Sh- little sugar gets you a lot further than some, exactly. vin- some vinegar. Trust me on that. Um, we talked about, obviously, uh, the type of... Um, the perfect pet owner is someone who certainly has some energy and patience and time to invest in your pets. It's worth investing yeah, in them because yeah. you just end up with the best companion. And they're a family member. They're not just a pet. Yeah. They're your family member. And then once, you, once you've got a, like a great trained dog, you can take them anywhere. So you can integrate them even more into your life, not just your at home. Your life will be easier when it you have It will be so much pet. easier. Yeah. I mean, I know people that say, gosh, I can't take my dog to a pet event right. because, you know, they react to, or I'd love to take them on a, you know, a coffee shop patio, but... Uh, they bark at people that come by you know right. so the, the, the more you train them the more you have a, a, a bond with them and, a, and a, a respect you'll be able to integrate them in every area exactly. of your life and take them wherever you can exactly. it, it's so nice when you can do that yeah you yeah. know I mean Mr. Twix is getting there Yeah, he's getting there he gets all nervous but you know I'm just getting so thrilled now that I can sit on a patio with him without him losing his tiny mind Roger is um, he's terrified for some reason when he's outside the house he's Aww. like it, well it's not terrified it's just like he's seeing the world for the first time and this is every day it's like Groundhog Day <gasps> wow. Oh. <laughs> it is and he goes to the uh, daycare at PetSmart once a week and they're like you know what we walk him around the facility and it's like he's just he's seen, never it seen it before. <laughs> isn't that amazing my sister always says he's like poor vacant Roger it's he just, just let it go <laughs> once he left it does not exist it's <laughs> like you know this message will blow up and yeah. disintegrate and then I'll start all over fresh isn't that funny it must be kind of nice to, maybe I should like to adopt that attitude oh. <laughs> that would you know wouldn't that be perfect yeah. in life just let everything from the day before go just go poof yeah. poof <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to tell you quickly about um, 
uh, my week this week, I got to uh, work with my friend Andy Wormsley on a new show that we did called Ent Speak, which is uh, Entertain As You Thought You Knew. And I got the, I do know Mary Wilson anyway from the Supremes, but she was one of our speakers, an amazing Jonathan, who's here in town, who's recently retired because of health issues. And we had Marty Allen, I mean, comic genius. He's 92 years old. Wow. I mean, he was, he was the whole Rat Pack era and everything. And I mean, to walk on stage at 92 yeah. and say, I'm walking on stage and I'm not, not going to walk on stage whenever I can walk on stage. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. So um, it was a, a show to just show these entertainers stripped down, another side of them. You don't hear their shtick. You, they're not their show persona. And it went down very, very, very well. So we'll be doing another one in January. Did it, not to sound stupid, did it air? I don't have TV. So oh, no. We, we will probably uh, show it on the screen, though, because we had a huge film crew okay. there. And we'll probably show it so that people can come in and enjoy oh, it. And, of course, with all you know, with a four-camera shoot, it's great to right. be able to see all the angles and the reaction of the audience and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But there were tears and there were laughter. Aww. Yeah, it was one of those kind of shows. But it was really great. And I want to thank my husband for looking after Mary Wilson and uh, looking after Marty. He's friends with them anyway. So that was, uh, that was nice to have him do that, even though I didn't pay him. <laughs> <laughs> oh well cheap labour that's what you get when you're married to the person that likes to do lots of events and shows you know but um, I'm hoping that uh, maybe we can do something next time off the ticket price for a little charity work yeah. so I'm going to see if I can I can make that happen uh, for animal rescue try and tie it in the best way I possibly <laughs> can or at least let dogs come to the event yes <laughs> actually I did talk to the venue have you been to Inspire Theatre no. it's on Fremont and the Boulevard right on the corner no I have to go opposite the Hennessy Pint Glass haven't seen that either. Oh time. my lord! Oh yeah, she goes to bed at eight o'clock. I do. No. I go to bed at eight o'clock and I live in a bubble. She needs a disco <laughs> nap and she needs to come out with me one night. That's what we need to do. But a great theatre, 125 seats in wow. it. Wow! I mean, it used to be a 7-Eleven. <laughs> Gosh. But I did. They have an amazing rooftop patio. So I, I love with what they're doing. I kind of dropped a little hint about, hey, have you ever done a dog event here? Yeah. And people were like, no, sounds interesting. So if I can make it happen, I will make it happen. I'll be there. It'll be fun. Yeah. And like I say, if you've got a well trained dog, then you can take him out with you to the events. So yes, see? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just so much It's just so much more fun. It's as simple as that. You know, Sam, whenever I take my dogs out, I always put one of your um, ties on. <laughs> do you? <laughs> I do. I dress them up smart. They have a tie on. I, love I get so it. many compliments. I love it. <laughs> yeah. We all have to dress up. I have a hard time deciding. <laughs> Easier for the dogs than I it is. I try and coordinate myself with, you know, their tie colour. So. <laughs> See, that's what I call a top tier <laughs> pet parent <laughs> of the ultimate, you know, the ultimate of pet parents. I just love that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I don't feel so freaky now. It's not just me. Um, I would say big thank you to you, Sam, coming in. It's my pleasure. I'm Thanks glad you finally me. slept through the night, not worried about this interview because you were sure perfect. I'm wrapping up. It's you, like I could keep going all day. We could be here all day. Uh, big thank you for coming in. That's Thanks. the Las Vegas Boxer Rescue. Take a moment to actually run over to their Facebook page and like their page. And if you can make a donation to their rescue, it will be most respected and most certainly appreciated appreciated uh, I want to thank Chris my producer he's great he thinks we're crazy and hey, I Chris. love that about him <laughs> and uh, he makes the show, show run great every single week I want to thank you the listeners you're a huge part of the show uh, by listening in every week and today you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio where it's all about pets people and pop culture I'm your host Sam the queen of rock and roll dogs and always remember kiss your pets good morning and good night have a great weekend and we will see you next week thanks for listening in Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.